All right, so induction. The next thing we need to look at as far as harder types. So inequalities happen a lot with extension two. Prove that one plus one over two squared, three squared, so on, always less than or equal to two minus one on n. So first case, n equals one. Left hand side is one. Right hand side, two minus one on one. Yes, that is one. And it's true that one is less than or equal to one. People get hung up with this inequality sign and in that they're saying, oh, but hang on, one is equal to one. So yes, it is less than or equal to one. It's equal to one. So that's fine. That proves the case for n equals one. Now, don't set it out like I'm setting it out right now. This is just to save a bit of time. Our, our assumption, therefore, would end up being for n equals k, this, and we want to prove this wonderful expression. It's still a series type, this one. So we'll approach it the same way as we always do with series type. Let's write out all the terms. Well, other than the plus dot, 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 of course. Then rewrite it with the second last one to highlight, hang on, that was my assumption. And we've assumed that little bit was less than 2 minus 1 on k. So I have something which is less than or equal to 2 minus 1 on k plus 1 on k plus 1 squared. We're trying to show that the left-hand side is less than or equal to 2 minus, what was it, 1 on k plus 1? Yeah. Well, I've already got the 2, so I'm not going to muck around with that. There's no point putting that into the fraction, only to later take it out again. So let's just have a look at the fraction part, the minus 1 on k plus 1 on k plus 1 squared. So the common denominator would obviously be k, k plus 1 squared. Be careful here, because it's minus the whole fraction. So this second part is minus k, because minus, minus would give us the plus that we had on the line before. So we're trying to turn this into 1 on k plus 1. Well, let's expand the top out. Ideally, what I'd like on the top would be k outside of k plus 1, because then that would factorise nicely, and I'd have left with 1 on k plus 1. It's not quite what I've got. But the wonderful thing about this is it's an inequality, not an equation. So this is what I'd like on top, k squared plus k. So I've then rewritten the fraction so that, OK, I've got k squared plus k, but now it's minus this other fraction, minus 1 on k, k plus 1 squared. Well, that's got to be less than if I didn't have the minus 1 on k. Because I'm saying, hey, it's equal to these first two terms minus something, well, it's equal to these two terms minus something, then it must be smaller than those two terms. And so that is less than 2, and we've got now what we want. We've got the k, k plus 1, which will cancel in the bottom, leaving us with 1 on k plus 1. Now, have a look at my setting out. I don't always put less than or equal to, because each line is saying this line is equal to the next line, or this line is less than the next line. But what I can now say is that my original left-hand side must be less than or equal to. Because at all points, I've put down either less than or equal to on each line. At no point did I use a greater than sign, if you like. And so there's my proof. Now, these ones are a little bit more unusual. We don't see ones like this in extension one. It's so where we set up a, a pattern. It's still a series, but ones where terms are defined by the terms before it. I mean, you could, if you wanted to, write an arithmetic series as term n plus 1 is equal to term n plus d. So you could write it in terms of previous terms. And that's what this one's doing. We're saying term n plus 1 is equal to the square root of 2 plus the term before it. And so long as we know the first term, we can create the pattern. And what this one is asking us to show is that doesn't matter which term we pick, it's always going to be less than 2. So let's prove it for the first. So a1 is the square root of 2, and sure enough, the square root of 2 is less than 2. So we're fine for the first term. So my assumption is going to be that term k is less than 2. I want to prove term k plus 1 is less than 2. So our proof, term k plus 1, but we've got a formula that allows us to link in our assumption. So it's equal to 2 plus a k, 
So therefore it must be less than the square root of 2 plus 2. Because term k is less than 2. Well, 2 plus 2, that's equal to 4, and the square root of 4 is 2. So term k plus 1 is less than 2. So what looks like something that could be difficult, actually it's fairly quite simple in this case. Here's a more interesting one. This one actually has two series that are sort of working together. So the first term in the x series is 5, and in the y series it's 2. The formula for the x series is to average the x and the y divide by 2. Formula for the y one is multiply the x and y together, and multiply it by 2, divide by x plus y. We want to prove that every single time we get the equivalent term in each series, so second term in each one or third term in each one, multiply them together, we'll always get the answer 10. So let's do it for if we grab the first term in each one, and term 1 times term 1 in the other one, 5 times 2, sure enough, that's 10. My assumption then will be that will work for if I get the kth term in the x series, the kth term in the y series, multiply them together, we'll get 10. We want to prove that if we get the k plus 1 term in each series and multiply them together, we'll get 10. So, okay. Using the formulas they've given us, it actually is quite easy when you look at it now. The 2 will cancel with the 2. The xk plus yk cancels. Leave me with just xk, yk, which we just assume is 10. So there we go. Every single term, time we'll, we'll get the answer 10. So sometimes they can look complicated, but they're not. Then there are other times when they look complicated, and they are. Fibonacci sequence we could write like this. Although in a Fibonacci sequence, we need the first two terms to create the pattern. Because remember, in a Fibonacci sequence, it's the sum of the previous two numbers. And so the traditional Fibonacci sequence starts with 1, 1. And we want to prove that every single term in Fibonacci is less than 1 plus root 5 on 2 to the power of n. Of course, the significance of 1 plus root 5 on 2 is the golden ratio, yes. So this time, because I'm going to end up using this formula and sub in a n and a n minus 1, I have to make two assumptions here. One for a n, one for a n minus 1, because I'm going to end up substituting two things in. So therefore I need to test for both a1 and a2, but in this case they're the same number anyway. So a1 is equal to 1, and 1 is less than the golden ratio, 1 plus root 5 on 2 to the power of 1. a2, but now squared, well squared it actually gets bigger, so it's 2.62, so again it is less than. So it works okay for the first two terms. So we're now going to assume for both k minus 1 and k as well. Because I'm going to have to substitute that into the, the, term, the formula they've given us. And so we're going to prove k plus 1. Okay. There's our formula. k plus 1 is term k, k minus 1. So it'll be less than 1 plus root 5 on 2 to the power of k plus 1 plus root 5 on 2 to the power of k minus 1. And we want to show this whole thing is less than 1 plus root 5 on 2 to the power of k plus 1. Well, I'm going to factorise, but I'm going to do it a little bit strange. Because I know the answer I'm looking for is 1 plus root 5 on 2 to the power of k plus 1, that's what I'm going to factorise out. And then as long as what I've got left, if I can show that what I've got left is less than 1, then the whole thing will be less than 1 plus root 5 on 2 to the power of k plus 1. So it's an unusual way. Normally when we factorise, we take the smallest number out. In fact, I've gone even bigger than the biggest one. I'm taking out power of k plus 1. But remember, factorising is just dividing. So the power that I'm left with here must be minus 1. And the power in the other one must be minus 2. So we have the reciprocal. So I get 2 on 1 plus root 5. And the reciprocal squared. 4 on 1 plus root 5 squared. An amazing thing happens. We end up with 6 plus 2 root 5 on 1 plus root 5 squared. And you'll never guess what 1 plus root 5 squared is. 6 plus 2 root 5. So in fact, that bracket turns out to be 1. 
And so sure enough, a k plus 1, therefore, is less than 1 plus root 5 on 2 to the power of k plus 1. Now, I don't think I've written the conclusion there. For this one, I would have to say true for k plus 1 if true for k and k minus 1. And then in our final line, I'd say, well, since it's true for 1 and 2, then it would be true by induction. All right. So in the handout I gave you, there's some sheets there. 10E in Patel has some interesting induction questions as well. And, of course, there is our past papers and, and all those as well.